Well, let's uh, get into this a little bit further. I'm very happy to say we have a couple of guests on the program. Faye Rachman is a No Hijab Day activist, and Reese Everson, a women's rights advocate and author as well, joins us live. Who will we start with? Um, Faye, despite the, the outrage, the hijab's popularity in the world it appears to be growing. We've got Sweden in this example, one of the world's most liberal countries, and we've seen a top fashion magazine cover with a woman wearing one as look of the year. These women are wearing them from choice. Are they wrong? Um, in my personal opinion, I have no problem with a woman choosing to wear the hijab. My problem stems more from uh, forced hijabs around the world uh, through law, such as in Iran and Saudi Arabia, as well as within our communities um, throughout the world. Many, many girls are forced into wearing the hijab um, without any, um, usually from a very, very young age, without any full understanding of what it represents and that how difficult it will be to later take it off. Rhys, when we're talking about this story in Sweden, uh, it's quite eye-opening some of the details. The creators of the mobile application, they offered a hijab avatar for girls aged three. They, they could play with that as they wished. Do you think that was OK? Well, the app uh, developers are merely reflecting the culture that's taking place in their community. Um, what we now know is that a lot of uh, people have immigrated to Sweden and they are practicing the um, Muslim faith and they do require that their children wear these hijabs as young as three. Um, we've seen uh, where school teachers in Sweden have been um, told that they have to make sure uh, by the parents that they have to ensure that their children don't take off their hijab even if they want to play at the age of three. Um, we've been told that there have been other uh, cases where some principals have said that no one's allowed to wear hijabs in their school. So there's definitely a community where this is a very real and present um, apparent, you know, issue and, and concern. And so we have to just allow the app designers to kind of uh, basically play to their audience, if you will. Faye, is there an issue with the, the banning, the concept of banning them? You know, if somebody is being forced to, to wear them, of course that needs to be addressed. But if you're, if you're rolling out a, a total ban, does that not make it an issue of women's rights compared to people being affected in a community which needs to be sorted out? Um, so before I answer that question, I do want to address something that Reese has brought up. Um, I do understand from the point of view of the app developers that they do need to cater to an audience. You are correct. However, I do find a huge problem in um, perpetuating this idea that children as young as three need to wear the hijab in any, in any form. And I would also like to say that hijab is not a culture. It is very much a religious symbol. Um, and the hijab throughout the years has erased several cultures around the world. It has erased the Somali culture. It has erased the, the culture that I come from, the Bengali culture. It has erased so many different cultures um, where women could wear whatever they wanted um, or what was culturally acceptable, if that's what we're going to call it, and has replaced it with the hijab. But to answer the question, um, if we're to talk about whether or not the hijab should be banned, I'm firmly on the side of the hijab shouldn't be banned. Uh, as someone who grew up in a fundamentalist household, as someone who was a fundamentalist, um, I can say for certain that if the hijab was banned in this country, in the UK, I would not have left my home. Um, and I think that that is certainly more toxic than a full ban on the hijab. I think that women should be able to choose what they wear, and that is exactly why I'm an advocate for No Hijab Day, because I stand for the choice to take it off. Um, which is something that is just not extended to people around the world and people within even my own community here in, in the UK. And Reese, the point is, isn't it, that, that, that people in the Western world, you know, they, they're, there's an issue of, of sisterhood, isn't it, looking out for people in perhaps more oppressed societies. Just to give you an example, we saw some Muslim women um, Last month, a female chess master in Iran removed her job during a tournament and was promptly removed from the team for saying it, quote, creates many limitations for women and deprives them of their basic uh, rights. You're just your thoughts on something like that. 
if you're going to start a movement, surely this should be supported in more liberal societies too. So, so here's where we stand as women in the West. Uh, we believe that representation matters. So when you see, when I myself see a little brown-skinned girl on a TV commercial, as a little girl, I believe I can grow up to be that person. Or when I see Serena Williams playing tennis or something to that effect, it shows me that I, too, am represented in the world around me. So what we don't want to do is not show women in hijabs because we don't want little girls who wear hijabs to feel as though they can't be a part of this larger story that we all are a part of, right? And then at the same time, there's a more insidious history and uh, maybe a more negative connotation about the idea that if a woman removes her hijab, that she can be um, jailed or, you know, even punished severely by her own family or by the government, um, jailed for 30 years, um, she could be murdered, and so, or, you know, acid, having acid thrown in her face. So these things um, although they are, like you said, uh, Faith, religious connotations, religious expectations of that are placed on these women, they come with very real and insidious and very unfortunate um, requirements, and it, it's a nuance that we want to balance. We want to allow women who are a part of this religion to feel as though they're a part of the larger fabric and this larger blanket that we all weave together to be a part of, but at the same time, we have to acknowledge the realistic history that stands behind and, and within the very real present history, um, the uh, realities that face women who are in these uh, are part of these religions. So it's 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 very nuanced. We want these young women who in the tennis uh, um, in the tennis tournament who take them off and say this is oppressive. Mm -hmm. We want their voice to be heard, right? Faye, is there an issue of what, what do you say when you hear the argument that the the burqa is an individual commitment to modesty for the vast majority of women and it's not oppressive or it doesn't oppress them in any way. Um, so I just want to say thank you to Reese for bringing up those points because I do agree and I'm, I'm very very grateful that you brought that up. Um, I do feel as though only one narrative is shown in the West when we talk about the hijab. Uh, it's, it's often a very positive narrative, but I think that the other side also has to be addressed. Uh, we have protests in Iran going on, which are just not highlighted by Western mainstream media. Um, but when we talk about the hijab or the burqa or the niqab or whichever item of clothing you would refer to, um, they have several names at this point. Um, if we are to say that it is oppressive um, or that it, it's described as not oppressive because it's an individual choice, I think that that statement has to be looked into much deeper. I think that many of us girls who are brought up in Muslim households into an Islamic faith, um, we are indoctrinated into wearing this and we are told why we wear it from a very, very young age without being able to fully understand all the implications behind it. Um, when I was a little girl and even now, um, people will tell me that the reason that they wear hijab is for modesty and that, you know, hijab helps um, prevent men from being sex sexually exploit exploitative and things like that, um, which I don't fully agree with. I think mm -hmm. that if we are to combat, um, you know, this... Uh, sexual behavior in men it should be something that men are educated in and it shouldn't be the the onus on the woman to prevent okay. that um okay i just want to bring so, up a point to, to reese here and about the story that we're yeah. talking about in, in in sweden do you think perhaps it's a case of what's going on there cultural appropriation by people in the west without actually understanding the symbolism and some as what um we've been going through today about some of the the issues surrounding it uh, like we're speaking about that example in Iran for example so here's the, here's my here's my view. I believe that um, sometimes appropriation is a very real thing, and in this instance, I don't believe it is. I believe that people like Elle magazine and um, uh, different countries are looking to celebrate the individual differences that many women face. If you look at uh, different brands of makeup, they're having they're they're using uh, or they're selling many more shades of of skin to represent to make sure everyone has a shade for themselves that matches who they are. And I think right now what the media, what magazines and, you know, the beauty standards are trying to do is just be more inclusive and say, there is a spot for you here. And so with that, we don't know all the times why some of the things that are represented in our cultures are, or, or religions 
they exist. So what we're now realizing is, okay, while we're trying to support and be inclusive, there are some issues with the, the historical and the, the current uh, realities that are attached to these uh, hijabs and, and the women being covered. And so if we ask uh, the question, you know, Afay, if we, in a, in a world where there were no men, in, in this high, you know, hyper unrealistic world where there are no men, would anyone need to wear a hijab? Well, no. The answer is no, because women are taught to wear hijab okay. so that they don't entice or encourage men to be um, aggressive, okay. right? Okay. And so Faye. what we have to do is realize there's a connection there. Okay, Faye, we, we have about 20 seconds left. If you want to just offer your final thought. Sorry? We have about 20 seconds left. If you'd just like to offer your final thoughts. My final thoughts on the hijab are, I'm not entirely sure which Swedish app this is in reference to. I don't think that there's any um, cultural representation going on, um, appropriation, sorry. I think they are just trying to represent a community, but I do think that the hijab does have a lot of negative connotations attached to it that just aren't being addressed, and I hope that people will start to address them and start freely talking about them without any fear of harassment of any sort. Faye Rackman, a no hijab day activist and Reese Everson, women's rights advocate. Thank you very much for coming and sharing your thoughts today. Thank you.